So really what we're looking at here is we're going to be trying to apply the law of signs in a given situation. All right? So don't automatically freak out when you read a word problem. If the, the scenario is kind of complex, difficult to understand, I'll draw a picture for you. If it's a more simplistic kind of illustration, I may allow you to draw the picture. The benefit of getting to draw the picture is that goes into partial credit. Okay? If you get the picture drawn but nothing else happens, at least you got credit for drawing the picture, right? In this case, it's kind of confusing, so I went ahead and drew the picture. The example that you see here is you have two towers that are 10 miles apart, right? Tower A is 10 miles due west of Tower B. Okay? Somewhere in between those two towers, there's a fire, right? Both towers can see the fire. But if I'm standing in Tower A from north, if I look due north, I have to turn 32 degrees to the east to see the fire. If I'm standing in Tower B, I have to turn 48 degrees to the west before I can see that fire. The question is, how far is the tower, are the towers, away from the fire? I'm going to give you about five, six, seven minutes to just... Go through that, talk to your neighbors, see what you can find out about this. You're going to have to remember back into some of your geometry, okay? I'm not going to say anything. I just want to see what you can come up with. Even if you can't get anywhere in terms of solving the problem, see how much information you can add to the diagram that's true, that you know is true. Keep your mind open and look and see what you see. The one, thing, the one thing I have to remi I'll remind you, this is common sense. If you look at the, the, the directional headings on a compass, north to south, east to west, right? If you go north and east, if you look north, east is 90 degrees. If you go north, west is 90 degrees, okay? So keep that in mind. Those directional changes are 90 degrees apart. That's all I'll say. I'm going to give you a few minutes. See what you can come up with. A lot of you automatically assumed that right here, that that was cut in half. We know that it's not cut in half because you can look at the angles, 32 and 48, they're not equal. If they were equal, then I have a lot of justification to say that 10 probably has been cut in half by that perpendicular line right beneath the fire. And I would say, oh, it's equally distant. This would make an isosceles triangle. Things would have been a lot easier to do. But turns out that it's not equal. So I want to be able to say something about this angle and the 48 and to get that in terms of my, inside my triangle. Now, listen carefully. We know how big this angle is, don't we? How big is how do we get this one how do we get it to be 58 isn't this true ladies and gentlemen isn't isn't this 90 degrees right right here isn't north and west or east 90 degrees hold on we're getting there there's two ways to do it and so if I subtract 90 minus 32, that turns out to give us what? That's 58 degrees. We can do the same thing on this side and find that one, and that's going to be... No, you're right. 42 degrees. Okay? Now, that's using the fact that I have complementary angles. If I have two angles, right? So if you come down over here, if we draw a right angle, and I cut that angle in, in, into two angles. Anytime that you have a right angle that's cut into two parts, those two parts add up to 90 degrees because I know that it's a right triangle. All right? So that's one method of getting that solution. Another way is if you have two parallel lines, right? So let's assume that we have parallel lines and they're cut in, in two, right? If I have two lines that, let's say, one is here and another angle is there, what do you know about these two angles right here? 
They're exactly the same. Alternate interior angles turn out to give you exact angle measurements, right? And so here we have a vertical line right here. We also have another vertical line here. I also have this line that, tr that cuts right through that. So if this is 32, then this up here is 32. Shh, listen. So that would make this one 48. If I add those two together, I get 80. Or I could have said 58 plus 42, and then subtract that from 180, and it would have still given me 80. And so if we map out this part, this angle at the top, is going to end up giving me my, ang my 80 degrees, right? So what do we do from there? So I I'm not going to write all of it out because it's pretty much the same thing, right? So, so here's what we would do. I would say, if I'm, let's say I'm going to find A first. We'd say A divided by sine of 58, shh, listen, equals, which, which angle do I have to work with? I have to work with C. Okay, so we're going to say 10 divided by sine of 80. And A turned out to be what number? 8.6. That looks like B. And B would, the, this process would be the same, except I would use, instead of the A over sine of 58, we would use B over the sine of 42. But what would B end up becoming? 6.8. Total coincidence. 8.6, 6.8. Okay? And so that's how I would solve that problem. So let's go back. What, what was the importance? What, was, what did I have to remember? First of all, if you go back up, you had to remember that two angles that break up a 90 degree angle have to add to 90 degrees. Can I remember get signatures from people I don't have yet? Yes. Do you have a stylus? Yes. Done? Oh, nice. Take care of that. All right. Next part. You had to remember, well, it have to, but it'd be nice, the fact that you go here and you realize you have alternate interior angles they give you two angles that, that add up to give you, or not add up, but they're exactly the same, right? So 32 is here, 32 would have been up there. However you wanted to do that, you had to do that to get the angle measurements. Something else that might be beneficial. Write out the law of signs in the way that I only gave you one bit of information to start with about that original triangle, right? It was the fact that you had a 10-mile distance between two pieces. I gave you some other angles, like the, the 32 and the 48, which I had to use those to get the relevant angles. But you got to know what you're looking for before you can figure it out. Questions about that? Most of you, or a lot of you got that right. Okay, good. Let's try another one. So here we have uh, a telephone pole or power line, shh, power pole. It's up on, oh, it's terrible. Don't, don't laugh at my drawings. Okay, shh. This goes up a pole, shh. Listen, this road, basically there's a road on a hill with a 10 degree incline. Shh, just go with it. Okay, the road is up at 10 degrees. Uh, the, 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 power, the power pole, the telephone pole, they're actually vertical, right? They're not going to be leaning to one side or another. Shh. But the sun, excuse me, the, the sun is casting a shadow. And so the shadow falls behind the pole back this direction. Okay? Shh. So this is 14 and a half feet long, the shadow is. The angle that the sun hits the top of the pole is 62 degrees. The angle of elevation for the highway, the road, is 10 degrees. Your job is to find out how tall the pole is. There is enough information here to find it. Okay, take a few minutes. I'll give you another five or six minutes and see if you can solve that. One more time. Shh, listen. 
that what I just told you was this. If you have two angles, we have A and B. If one side is straight, it's a, it's a straight line, right? We know that these are supplementary, meaning they both combine to give me a, an angle of 180 degrees. So A plus B, in that case, <clears throat> would be 180. Well, if you come up over here, look right here. Isn't that a straight angle nope. on the road? So if, if B, we know that B is going to be 80 degrees. How do you know that? Because this is a right angle. Okay? If, if the bottom piece is 10 degrees, the top piece has to be 80. So what do we know about the other side? This has to be 100. Which confirms my suspicions about, oh, that's got to be bigger than 90 because it's obtuse. Right? If it were less than 90, then I would have seen that. At least that part of it's drawn to scale. All right? Um... Let's think for a minute. If I'm going to write this out, I need A over sine A equals 14.5 divided by sine of C. So this is actually worse than we expected because now I finally got an angle and it's neither one of them do I need, right? I need A and I need C. So can you think of something else to do? I want you to find, shh, I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to find the other two angles in that triangle. So, shh, the fact is that we know if you come in, shh, we've got this part, which is 90 degrees, right? So, 62 plus 90 plus the one thing I don't have adds up to 180. How do we know that? It makes a straight angle. Right? So if I add all three together, you do end up with 180. So that makes that angle what? So it's 28 degrees. And if I have 28 there, that's 52 here. Okay? 28 at the top, right here. And the 52 at the bottom. I'm going to go down to the bottom. And let's erase the pieces I don't have. Actually, A is what I'm going to need. So we'll, we'll need A, and we have sine of, what is that, 52, and sine of 28. So A ends up being 24.3 feet. Thank you. Okay? So, real, real quick, you have to remember, shh, listen. That multiple angles that add up to give you a straight angle on one side always sum to 180. If I know all of them but one, I can always find that missing one. It's the same thing here. If they add up to 90, because there's a right angle there, I can always find that one missing one. I use that, shh, gentlemen, and all the other missing pieces by adding, from, subtracting from 180, to find out that missing part. Questions? Okay, so I get what you do here. I don't know what 